Welcome back, guys. This is Lindsay with Garage Gym Reviews. Now, we are going to talk about women's barbells specifically. I'm actually so excited about this because we've kind of been in more of like a male-dominated space. And that hasn't been a bad thing. It's been great. But all we've had here at GGR is male bars. So we've had the 20-kilogram bars. We recently just went ahead, ordered a bunch of 15-kilogram bars, ones that I have picked that I wanted to try or that I have used in the past. And I'm actually so excited about this review because I feel like we have a lot of good options here. So if you are looking for a general multi-purpose training bar, stick around. Make sure you are subscribed to this video so you can watch videos just like this one. Also, if you want to go ahead and purchase any of these bars that we talk about today, we have a link below the like button. When you use that link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does give us a small commission. And we really appreciate it when you do that. Okay, so let's start off with the Colorado bar. Now, I do have a full video review coming out on this bar specifically because I think it is probably one of my top picks for a multi-purpose general training bar. Okay, I want to start off by talking about the cost point of each bar. So this bar specifically is $250. I think this is a actually really fair price point. It's not the most expensive, but I do think it is one of the best bars out there. My only real call out to this bar is that it doesn't have a lot of color options. Now that's okay because I think that this pink is actually like the perfect shade of pink. Like genuinely, I love this color. But if you are looking for more variety in color, the men's 20K version has a lot more color options, whereas this just has three. With their three options, it comes with a chrome and then a hard chrome sleeve. Or their other options are you have a pink Cerakote with a black Duracote sleeve and then a black Cerakote with a black Duracote sleeve. I like having the Duracote sleeve more than a Cerakote sleeve because I do feel like a Cerakote sleeve tends to wear off. If you are somebody who wants your bar to continue to look really nice and new, then having a Cerakote sleeve that's just going to honestly like wear off so quickly. Now this bar I think is one of the best multi-training purpose bars. So whether you're doing CrossFit, Olympic lifting, power lifting, if you're doing lots of barbell cycling, I think this is one of the best bars you can choose. One thing that I really like about this is it's knurling. So it has a medium depth volcano style knurling. For me, this is one of the best feeling knurlings that I have trained on. When I compare it to the Bella bar, and we are going to talk more specifically about that here in a second, I do feel like the knurling on this is a little bit more grippy, but it's not aggressive. So for me, I feel like I can do a lot of power lifting on it, right? Like if I'm doing deadlift, I actually feel like this is a pretty decent grip or I can do Olympic lifting and not worry about it like eating up my hands over time. It also comes with dual markings. So it has your IWF and then your IPF markings. So if you are somebody who wants to know exactly where to place their hands, if you're a competitive power lifter, if you're a competitive weightlifter, that is super helpful to have. It doesn't come with this center knurling. So if you are somebody who does a lot of power lifting, that might be a drawback to you. But for me, it's not that big of a deal. This is made of composite bushing. So it actually creates a pretty decent spin. And then it's actually a very decently quiet bar. So even though this one is brand new to us, we do have a men's Colorado bar that we've dropped so many times. And it stayed really nice, maintained that spin, is really durable, and then also, again, a very quiet bar. It does have like a medium whip to it, which I find super helpful, especially if you're doing things like the clean and jerk. I think that this is a really solid bar to have. The length on this is 79.1, and then the sleeve size is 12.4 inches. This is overall a pretty standard size length. Most of the bars that we're gonna talk about here today don't vary too much from that, and they're all around that 79 inch mark. Last couple things, it does feature a 25 millimeter diameter, which is standard for a 15K bar. Now, one thing I think is super beneficial is if you are somebody who is doing a lot of deadlifting, this might be a good bar to use because it does have a smaller diameter. So you're just able to really grip onto that bar a lot better. And then last thing I wanna say about this bar, it does come with a 190K tinsel strength which anything above around 180K, I think is really solid. So for me, this bar checks kind of all of my boxes in terms of the style of training I like to do. And I would absolutely get this bar. 
Next up is the bar from Nike. This is a recent release. Now I had my reservations about it and Coop did do a full video review on the 20K version. This is the 15K version. Now, do I think it's worth $290 for a general purpose multi-training bar? I am not sure, but I actually do think this is a good bar and a good bar specifically for Olympic lifters, which we are gonna talk about. But this bar costs $290. It does come in a couple different options. So you have this orange, swoosh version you have a you have a black bar that says just do it you also have a red bar with the swoosh on it i think that a little bit of this price point is that you're paying for the nike name now i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because i like a lot of products by nike but i still think that the jury is out on the durability and the longevity of this bar specifically all of the bars do have a ceramic based coating and then on their website it doesn't say what the coating on the sleeves are but they are a nice ribbed sleeve and so it's not a smooth sleeve i like a ribbed sleeve so some people have a preference i don't have a huge preference but i do think the sleeve on this is really nice on their website it says it has a medium volcano knurling I'm not so sure about that. When I compare this to the Colorado bar, it definitely feels different and it both states that they have a medium volcano knurling. In my opinion, it feels a little bit more passive, something similar to the Rogue Bella bar. But again, that's just kind of my opinion. However, Coop has also called out the same thing in which this doesn't necessarily feel like a medium volcano knurling. And if you look closely, it almost looks more like a hill knurling. So I'm not exactly sure where I land on this. But in terms of how it feels, I would say it feels very much more similar to the Bella bar. Now, one thing to say about this, all of the other bars that we're talking about here today use some sort of like bronze bushings in the sleeve and then in the bar. This actually comes with eight needle bearings. Now, needle bearings generally create a bigger spin and you're going to have a bigger cost associated with that. With this, it doesn't necessarily say that there's eight needle bearings in each sleeve. We kind of assume it's probably four in each sleeve. But I would definitely say this creates a really quality spin. So for me, I wouldn't say that this is the best general multi-training purpose bar. But if you are somebody doing a lot of Olympic lifts, then I would actually probably recommend this because the spin on this is so nice and so smooth. Again, this has no center knurling, just like all the other bars that we talk about here today. And then it, again, with those IWF and then the IPF marking standards. So if you are competing, then this is gonna be super helpful to have. With this bar, it comes with 190K tinsel strength, so a very good quality bar. And then it also comes with a good medium whip. I would definitely compare it to something like the Bella bar, I actually feel like the Bella bar and this are very similar. However, I do think that the spin on this is a little bit better than the Bella bar. And that's just like my personal opinion. My final thoughts on the Nike bar. I do think you're paying a little bit higher cost point for that Nike brand name. And do I think it's the best multi-purpose training bar? No, but again, I think it's really good for those doing a lot of Olympic lifters because again, like, ugh. That is so smooth. I like it so much. It just feels so good. Nike does offer a five-year warranty on the bar. So definitely lacking compared to something like the Bella bar, but a five-year warranty on a barbell is actually pretty decent. Okay, so next up is the Bella bar. We also do have a full video review on this bar. And this bar has a lot of different options. So its price ranges from $235 all the way up to $330, depending on what finish you get. This one is the black sink with the e-coating. This is one that I've used most frequently here and then at my other gym. I really like this bar. If you are into CrossFit at all, it's probably a fair assessment to say that they do have the Bella bar in there. The Bella bar is actually most used at the CrossFit games. So overall, I mean, this bar from Rogue is one of the best. Now they do have five options to choose from. Obviously this black zinc eco finish. They also have a Cerakote and a stainless steel version. If you get the stainless steel version, you can also get stainless steel sleeves, but that's going to cost you even more money. It's 80 extra dollars if you want to go ahead and add on the stainless steel sleeves to the bar itself. So if you're getting the stainless steel version at 330 and you're getting the stainless steel sleeves added on, that's another $80. I mean, you're almost at like $400 for this bar. And that is pretty expensive, especially for like a general training bar. Like this isn't a specialty bar, right? Like if you're getting like a Leco, you're getting like needle bearings and you're specifically training for like Olympic lifts. Yeah, sure, spend that money. But for a general multi-purpose training bar, I think just go with like the black zinc eco. It's $235. 
and it's gonna last you a really long time. The only thing I would say about choosing kind of the cheaper option finishes is that it's not going to look like this over time. This black zinc and E coating is definitely going to wear off. It's not going to look as nice, but it's still going to function just as well. One benefit to Rogue as a brand, and then obviously this Bella Bar, is they are all manufactured here in the USA and then it ships within three to five days. So if that is something that is important to you for it to be USA made, then this is definitely a bar to look at. The diameter on this is 25 millimeters, just like with the Colorado bar. And then the overall length is again, 79.1 inches, but it does have a larger loadable sleeve than the Colorado bar at about 13.1 inches. Depending on what bar you get, it does come from a range of PSI. So you have 190K all the way up to 200K tinsel strength. Remember 180K is kind of the standard that we look at. So this is going to exceed that mark and be a really solid bar. In terms of its knurling, it has a hybrid knurling. Now it is a little bit more passive than the Colorado bar in my opinion, probably not as good for power lifts if you're looking to really do like a heavy clean or a heavy deadlift. I mean, it's still got some great to it, but it's definitely not the most grippy knurling. It also doesn't come with a center knurl marking. None of the bars here today that we are going to talk about come with a center knurling. It does come with IWF and then IPF marking. So if you are training for a specific like Olympic competition or a powerlifting competition, then these are really helpful markings to have on a bar. The Bella Bar comes with bronze bushings, which gives it a really decent spin. It lasts a long time. I mean, bushing bars in general are probably one of my favorites to train with. Unless again, you are doing specific Olympic lifting, I think a bushing bar is going to be really great and kind of the best of both worlds, right? It gives you a decent spin, but it also creates stability when you're doing like bench or strict press, anything overhead. You're not gonna have a ton of spin to that bar. I think that the huge selling point to the Bella Bar is the fact that it has a lifetime warranty. There's not a lot of other companies out there that do provide a lifetime warranty. We are gonna talk about the lack of warranty that Titan Fitness has here in a second. So for the Bella Bar to have a lifetime warranty, I think is worth the investment, especially if you're gonna go ahead and do the stainless steel option rack up that like 230 plus $80 option. I mean, this is going to last you a very long time. Lastly, I want to talk in depth about the Titan Series Olympic barbell. Now, I have a lot of confusing thoughts about this barbell, if I am honest. It's $300, which is more than what we see with like the Blacks Eco or the Eco of the Bella Bar. It's more than the Colorado Bar. It's more than the Nike Bar. And so when I walked up to it, I was like, okay, so this is going to be a sick bar. Like this is $300. I just can't find why it's $300. The first thing I want to call out is it has has like a double knurling, which essentially means that the machine was like not precise in it. And you can see like, we'll show you on B-roll where the knurling comes off in the bar. So overall, like that's kind of like my first call. Is it going to affect you while you are lifting? No, it's just kind of the idea to me is like, there's a lack of attention to detail and the manufacturing of this bar. Okay, so with the Nike bar, I definitely feel like it's more suited for Olympic lifts, especially given the needle bearings on this. With this, it's made with bronze bushings. Now there is a difference in the spin between these bronze bushings in the bar and then something like the Bella bar or the Colorado bar. This is actually very stiff and has very little spin to it. One thing we notice is on this bar, when I go ahead and spin this side, you can just kind of hear some grinding inside. You can kind of hear almost like this grinding factor that's happening. So for me, would I recommend a lot of Olympic lifts on this bar? Probably not. But do I do think it's good for power lifts? Absolutely. I mean, it is a more stable bar. The other thing that I think it's well suited for, for more like power lifting, is the knurling. This feels like a more aggressive knurling than I sell with some of the other bars. It just is like really grippy in my opinion. So if you are doing heavy deadlifts, then this might be a bar that you're looking for. On their website, it doesn't state specifically what the knurling pattern is. It just says that it's a medium knurling. I think based on how it looks, it seems like a medium volcano knurling. This is a 25 millimeter bar. And then the total length of this bar is 79.1 inches. It also has a loadable sleeve of 11.75 inches. So definitely the smallest loadable size sleeve that we've seen out of all the bars we've talked about today. It does come in four different colors and it all is serif 
Cerakote. So the bar is Cerakote, the sleeves are Cerakote. I don't love Cerakote on the sleeve because as you are adding plates onto it, it's just going to wear out really quickly. It's not gonna affect the functionality of the bar, but if you're wanting to keep your bar looking very nice and new, then having a Cerakote on the sleeve is going to wear out pretty quickly. This bar is rated 190K tinsel strength. It has 190K PSI. Also comes with a weight capacity of 1,500 pounds, which is pretty standard to what we see with most of the other bars. They're around 1,000 to 1,500. On their website, there are eight reviews and it has an average rating of 4.75 stars. People really like it for powerlifting, but a lot of people haven't mentioned any sort of Olympic lifts or good for like barbell cycling. What I've read most, and this is something that I definitely agree with, like I've said, is that this is good for like your three basic lifts. So your bench, your squat, and your deadlift. So is this better than the Colorado bar? Absolutely not. Like at least in my opinion, I do think if I were to rate the bars that we've talked about today, I would pick the Colorado bar, then the Bella bar, then the Nike bar, and then this bar. Another one I just want to briefly mention is one that I use a lot in my home gym, and that is the Fringe W2 bar. We are going to do a full video review on that soon. But if there is a bar that I am missing that you want us to review or that you think should be added to this list as something that is a good bar to look at for a 15 kilogram bar, let us know in the comments below. This has been Lindsay with Crash Gym Reviews. Peace.